One of the challenges of uh, improving the therapeutics of Parkinson's disease has a lot to do with drug delivery. Levodopa is a drug that is well absorbed in the upper GI tract, uh, upper small intestine, that is, in the duodenum and jejunum with other amino acids, but it has to get there. And as Parkinson's disease progresses in the brain, it's also progressing systemically at different locations, one of which is the stomach. And the increasing problem of delayed and incomplete release of levodopa from the stomach, where it's not absorbed at all, to the sites of amino acid uptake define really the stage of Parkinson's when irregularity and motor fluctuations um, is most obvious. Uh, there may be other problems there too, overgrowth of bacteria in the uh, upper parts of the small intestine, but the failure of regular housekeeping functions of the stomach of delivering the drug with a small amount of uh, fluid into that territory constitutes one of the reasons for irregularity. This has been well documented from pharmacokinetic studies, and it's estimated as many as one third to one half of patients have abnormal gastric emptying functions. Of course, patients might also have diabetes mellitus or other gastric problems that uh, interfere with uptake uh, beyond what Parkinson's is imposing on them. But this is a common problem uh, for which we have to find the future cure for synucleinopathies because the same alpha synuclein that's damaging neurons in the brain and causing the motor symptoms is hitting the stomach hard. So uh, it's a prevalent problem. It's one that doesn't have a rapid uh, uh, access uh, answer in terms of medications, that is how to get the stomach to empty. Uh, cold beverages seem to slow things down but warm beverages don't seem to enhance the release of medication. About all we can offer our patients is to uh, take their medication a half hour before or an hour after a meal so there isn't simultaneous competition of the stomach's function and digestion with its role in trying to get those pills sent downstream to the upper small intestine. And there may also be the problem of protein intake. It isn't a major problem for every patient. And in fact, I encourage patients to determine whether they are sensitive to dietary protein, which of course is uh, digested into amino acids. And so a large protein or amino acid intake competes with a small intake of levodopa uh, 100 milligrams, 150 milligrams, and so on. And guess what wins? It's the dietary protein for uptake. There isn't a specific uptake mechanism for levodopa apart from all the other amino acids. And so the best one can do is to find out if there is a competition going on. Now, how can this be carried out? A patient might uh, have lunch for three days in a row with a lot of protein to see one end of the extreme, and then lunch for a few days in a row in which uh, amino acids are minimum by a low protein intake, salad, fruit, something like that. Patient can then report back whether that made a difference, whether the days with high protein led to shutting down or incomplete effect of levodopa. If they don't have that effect, and I would say the majority of patients don't, then I don't think patients need to be counseled to stay away from protein or to restrict it to the end of the day as is so prominently stated on the internet for many patients reading. But it is a real effect and it can have an impact for those patients who are very sensitive to doses of uh, uh, levodopa being interfered with by their dietary uh, intake of protein.